Okay, so we're doing chapter 9, a heart-to-heart -heart promise. As I said before, this is, uh, this is also new to me. I haven't exactly touched anything since chapter 8. Again, I've been doing a few other, playing a few other games lately. So yeah, apparently Ion just knows how to make bombs out of coconuts. Which makes me worried about Rodea's safety in general, about being around her. Did the explosion damage something? What the f- <laughs> I make mistakes when I rush. And you know, you could have died, but you didn't. I guess that's good. What the f- What is wrong with her? Her reaction to nearly killing Rodea is, Eh. I- Eh. I goofed. What do you want me to say? Jeez, I'm sorry. You know? Don't be a friggin' drama queen about it. You nearly died. Who cares? Everything's okay. Jeez, be a little bitch much, Rodea. Is this a, real, a running trend of Ion just taking, like, severe situations just way too nonchalantly? Like, suddenly the world, like, it's just the freaking apocalypse. And she's like, eh, you know, it happens. The world's ending, who cares? Everybody's unhappy, nobody's happy about this. Uh, oh shit. Uh, uh. So naturally, this pink road is danger. Oh fuck. Well, that was my mistake. Oh man, I'm dead. Starting off great. Starting off spectacular. All right, let's just let's just hustle back over there. Let's see if I can get an actual decent chain going on here. So. Oh, little update uh, about the Persona 4 playthrough, if if anybody wonders. Uh, from now on, that series is no longer going to be done uh, live. It's going to be done as a post-commentary uh, video series. Oh my god. I need to get the tail upgrade. I missed it. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's going to be done post-commentary, considering, like, I started that in the summer of 2015, and now it's January. So if I kept doing it the way I was, I would never get it done. Okay. Speaking of never getting it done... This... Oh my goodness. No tail really hinders you. You have to, like, constantly pr be pressing the B button in order to even be making any, uh... Any motion. And now I have to be extra careful. All right, this is gonna be a long trek. Oh my god. Okay, good. Good, it does it auto, because I didn't know how to handle that. Okay, and I can ding the, the uh, bell, but I cannot attack. So this is fun. At least I have a barrier. So now it's challenge run, Rodea. No tail mode. I'm going MLG Pro here, you guys. Okay, so yeah, the P4G playthrough will now be done uh, post-commentary edition. So, look forward to that. The commentary itself. Oh, look, I got my tail back once you get a gun. Once I got my gun. That's cool. That's a nice little power-up trade-off. <clears throat> So yeah, the commentary won't really change off. I've played the game multiple times, so... Mm, I, I kind of know what's going to happen, so... But I'm still... but, And I'm sure a lot of people know what the main story is of Persona 4. I know, I know I'm talking about this in a Rodea playthrough, but I figured I'd just address it whenever I do another... Whenever I uh, upload another episode, which I've actually started work on. I've just been trying to do this and Dirge. Um, and I realize a lot of people probably have already... What the hell? How is that different from what we've been doing? Anyway, and I realize a lot of people have probably already played Persona 4, or at least have somewhat cursory knowledge. Oh, goodness. That's what they mean by fly against the wind. Time to ride the wind, like Kamen Rider. Have at least a cursory knowledge of the game. But, you know, ju just... 
Some people might not, so I'm still not going to have too many spoilers in the game in my playthrough. Alright, so this is a new mechanic to... Oh, you dick-ass crabs. I wonder if this is going to play into a boss later. That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I always feel like Rodea is somehow is like voiced by the guy who did Karama from uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. I know I'm probably wrong on that, but still. They sound somewhat similar. Like, I know at one point David Hayter voiced him in a movie, but I don't... Obviously, it's not David Hayter. Otherwise, people probably would have made a lot bigger of a... Revelation about... Revelation about this, uh... There'd be a lot more hype for this game is what I'm trying to get across. Oh, speaking of which... Uh, two best friends, actually... By two best friends, I mean, uh... Matt and Liam... Did their own little video on, uh... Rodea the Sky Soldier. And they did the... They also did the Wii U version. And wow, does that version look like fucking garbage. Yeah, it doesn't look fun. I know I mentioned that you cannot fly indefinitely in that game, but wow. Just wow. I didn't think a game could possibly be that looked that bad. I didn't realize how two different versions could be so freaking different. And how the Wii U and how the Wii U version could look infinitely shittier than the Wii version. But again, this is Yuji Naka's... The Wii version is Yuji Naka's original vision, so... Yeesh. I just did not... I, like, I mean, I heard negative things about it, but I just did not expect it to look that bad. Graphically and gameplay-wise. It's honestly kind of depressing. And it's even more depressing at the fact that not a lot that, unless you got one of the day one editions, one of the few day one editions from, uh, that include the Wii version. And I think I saw a, a few copies of it at Best Buy whenever I went there, uh, a few days ago. <clears throat> That's the only way that you could actually play the Wii version, the far superior version. But wow, that's, that's a little disappointing. Well, now I don't want to even touch the Wii U version. Even the... And it has upgrade robot parts, and there's all kinds of other stupid crap. Oh, since I'm on the topic of other LPs that I'm doing, uh, Dirge of Cerberus. I made a mistake in the video, in the most re... In, like, the second episode. I missed getting something. I missed getting something, but I promptly corrected it in... I promptly corrected it. So, there shouldn't be an issue in... And when I mention in the Dirge playthrough, you're all gonna understand how big of a mistake I made. But it's been corrected. A lot of stuff you realize that you screwed up on after the fact. Oh, and the stage is just over. Okay. Yeah, and they also mentioned about Ol' Me. Apparently the way he just says little Ol' Me. Uh, Matt and Liam, I mean. Is that an order? Uh-uh. It's a promise. Promise me you'll come back. Safe and sound. Sure. It's a promise. I thought my headphones are off, but they're just making noise. Okay. Oh. So, let's just move on to the next chapter. That was kind of a short one. Yeah, they mentioned, like, Ol' May, his... I guess he just... The way he kept calling himself Little Ol' May, they just called him Ol' May. Oh, are we having another boss fight? That'd be cool. You kill Dio Gordon. Belhimos, the mighty sand dragon. He kind of reminds me of, uh... Moldrums. I, I might be saying the name wrong. You know, the giant worm bosses from Majora's Mask. Do I really have to fight? You're trying to reason with a dragon. Rodea. You are not it, that, that intelligent, are you? Wake up. 
No shit, the giant glowing fuck me lights on its, on its back are the weak point? Uh... Not if I kick it in the dick! Yeah! And by its dick, I mean its mouth. That's where I'm assuming its dick is. In its mouth. What an odd alien physiology to have one's... To have one's reproductive organs inside their mouth. Well, at least this one does different stuff whenever you hit its weak spot. Apparent... Supposedly it's getting faster. And it's actively running away. And I need to find it. Where the fu- How do you lose a giant dragon? Anything is possible when you just dedicate the Wiimote to all your controls, including your camera. Again, I'm not entirely... <clears throat> I don't much like the fact that you have to do point and click, including with the camera. I don't enjoy it. And in your face. So far, this is a pretty cool little boss. I mean, it's it's obviously far more impressive than Dio Gordon, but kill just as fast. Well, bye, Belhumus. Belhe. Oh fuck! You got jacked up. And it dies the same way as the giant worm boss from Majora's Mask. The head's the last thing to fall off. Twin mold. That's what I'm thinking of. Twin mold. And it's the exact same one from friggin' uh, from Wind Waker. Thanks. I kept my promise. Ooh, you haven't changed at all, Ooh. And that's what makes you weak. Who is this gentleman in the, in the bright yellow? With the... Ooh, I got an A rank. Unlock stage three. All right. Let's do one more stage, and then we'll call this a video. <laughs> this one sounded a little bit more flamboyant. I'd imagine he'd be the red one, but then again, we're the red one. Oh, God. You don't have to emphasize your words that long, dude. It's cool. Making sex robots. <laughs> Why does my granddaughter speak in SFX? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, how is he surprised by any of this? He didn't he like meet up with her grandma by doing like a giant uh, naga tr in a giant naga based trap? Ion, seriously, I can hear everything. Everything. What's wrong, Ion? Did she get kidnapped? Which machine? Six machine? Six machine is the best. Oh, another new guy. Don't you lie to me, you machine. I don't like you. I don't believe him. Whoa. And another and a possible another love interest. Could just be putting on an act. My mustache doesn't trust him. Well, it was his kind that attacked Garuda. But if he wanted to take Ion, he could have done it sooner. Then explain how the other machines found this village. You'd best step off, human, before I break you like a Kit Kat bar. If he broke the secret, how could he give it to them in the first place? You are like twelve. Stop giving the come hither eyes. <laughs> Don't make decent points. Didn't we just go there? Oh, please don't. We can go there ourselves. We can fly. My little brother is a bitch. Rodea helped me get the medicine for my sister. So now 
So she just has a bird, like, systematically attached to her? Aww. <laughs> Stop putting your fingers together like that. Show some backbone. Even Grandpa's doing it. <laughs> she sounds creepy. I can't carry that many bitches. Volcano under the blazing skies. Give this game some credit. It has some pretty bitchin' titles. <laughs> the fish ruin it. The fish ruined the atmosphere. Cause they got big old goofy eyes like ball. I didn't sign up for this stupid shit. Oh my god. And we have the asshole who never trusts anybody, no matter how- Whoa, okay. We have the asshole who never trusts anybody, no matter how much good you do. Those are always fun characters. No, fuck you, hero. Ugh. Alright, watch out for the fish. They got little spikes on them. And... Yeah, just fuck them. Yeah! So far, I'm liking the stage. It's very straight. Very straight and narrow. Shooting fish is- it's like literal shooting fish in a barrel. Only without the barrel. They're invincible. Invincible fish. I know I keep mentioning this, but Wishing to Call is doing a very good, uh, a very well done guide on uh, her channel. And I think she's actually up to chapter 21. So if you're curious of what this looks like further on ahead with more metal gathering, please check out her channel. It's so cramped. I hope Mount Evan has enough room for all of us. I feel like I've heard Sonya's voice actor somewhere. This game does not have any real credits so far online about the names of the voice actors. I know Patrick Sates is probably the voice of uh, Lord Girado. But I swear I've heard the old man, I've heard Sonya's voice actors before. Somewhere. I know I have. Rodaya, stop doing pointless little minigame areas. No. Screw off. I'm doing all these, old man. Beep boop. I kind of miss the fact that Rodaya doesn't say beep boop anymore. Again, I don't... Like, I keep mentioning that the story is just going by super fast. Whoa, okay. Like, they already had the love, the blushy blushes from Ion toward Rodea, and I imagine Sonya's gonna want to get in on this, too. For some reason. They already had Rodea going through the arc of being a robot, and now he has a heart and stuff. Like, within the same level. Like, that's... Like, that's kind of jumping your plot railroads, isn't it? Like, I applaud a game that can just kind of get to the point. But, I mean, if you have a story to tell, you can kind of flesh out a little bit. You don't have to drag your heels, but at the same time... Well, okay. You don't have to drag your heels, but at the same time, you can kind of take it a little slower than an, instead of a fucking breakneck speed. Can it? Do I shoot it or do I hit it? Okay. Well, apparently that's a shortcut, everybody. It's fun when we learn together. Oh, it's just a... It's an octopus, apparently. I don't know. Well, then the bird's a spy, isn't it? We have to kill all the birds. Which is ironic, again, considering I've mentioned this before. Theme... theming words, as I say it. Uh, the themes of, like, the names of certain empires. Like, Garuda is the name of a place. Which 
Garuda is also the name of a giant bird. And Naga is the name of, like, snake people. That you might be familiar if you play, like, D&D or a lot of fantasy games. And yet, there aren't that many birds, save for the one that Sonya has right now. And the Naga Empire don't really have a lot of snakes. They have a shit ton of fish. And I guess Belhemus was a snake? Although they called it a dr- what the fuck? Spiders! Spider Riders. Or just regular spiders. Okay, this doesn't make sense, considering the spiders are not in their webs. I guess it's just trying to make you be more conscious about where you fly so you don't just go nuts. But oh, if I just stay low. Get low, get low. These things are kind of cool enemies. These uh, squid, these octopus. Or squids? I don't know. They make little tornadoes. I'm saying things you can probably infer on your own, but you know. So this is just a gauntlet, huh? I'm really curious of who that other guy is, that new, like, R-Unit character is. He looks a lot cooler than Olme. And as I already mentioned before, once you, I, it didn't show it off whenever I beat Olme in the original version, in the episode where I beat him, but whenever I played this before I started recording and I beat Olme, it said Olme is now available as an uh, as a uh, character in multiplayer. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume, unless for some reason they just make Olme the the player two character, you can play as all the R zero units in multiplayer. Maybe that's the costume that you get for getting all the medals. You get to play as one of the other R zero, one of the R different R units. That'd be cool. I wouldn't mind that. I mean, sure, it's just a palette, it's just a skin swap, but you know. All right. So we did three levels in one video. Not bad. Really? We're in the fucking clouds. Can't get much closer. All right. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good on on uh, time. Doing pretty well. Kick my mic stand. All right. So on the next episode, Chapter Twelve, Operation Rescue Ion. Oh boy. All right. Until then, thank you very much for watching.